Good morning, all, and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to be empowered, inspired, and learn to live our happiest lives. Today, we hear about diversity and inclusion in Hollywood. Learn about the importance of a bra that fits. That's for you, ladies. We see a behind the scenes magazine cover shoot and hear the keys to success. We first meet Edward Selvin, CEO of Seji TV and the president of the International Monaco Film Festival. He speaks with us about diversity and inclusion in Hollywood. We then hear about the fitting curve, especially bra store. The owners, Kelly Saintis, Helene Delintz, and Stephanie Vincent teach us how many bras we need in a lifetime, the benefits of a bra fitting, and the help they give back to breast cancer survivors. Lastly, we meet with Kathleen Cutler, luxury sales expert. She shares with us the key to success is sales and relationships, going back to old fashioned communication in a virtual world. Now let's meet our guests. Hello, Ed. Welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. How are you doing, Marcy? Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to have you and talk about diversity and inclusion and all of the amazing things that you are doing. Yes, thank you. I mean, thank I don't know how you have any time, Ed. You're the CEO of Sycamore Entertainment Group. Uh, you're one of less than 10 Black CEOs to head a public company. Yes. You have just released a, uh, or launched a digital streaming network, Seggy TV. And I mean, the list goes on and on. Yes. So thank you for making some time. Thank, thank you again for having me. It's my pleasure to be on this segment. Thank you so much. So I know you're very deeply uh, involved in the movie business and yes. you're create and you're looking to create more diversity in Hollywood and Hollywood is a huge influence on us. And you're looking to have Hollywood provide more opportunities. Yeah. So how can the entertainment industry push us forward to higher levels of diversity in the productions? And how can that help us with social injustice? Marcy, again, thanks for having me. And I think that's a great question. And it's a question that Hollywood and the entertainment industry at large has struggled with for a long time. And, but the funny thing is the, 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 the solution is very simple. And that mm -hmm. is by hiring more people of color, diverse um, backgrounds to be in the decision-making process mm -hmm. for, for starters, but more importantly, to be in the writing and the content creating uh, portions of the business because if you come from a diverse background and you're a writer or you're a director or you're a producer you're bringing those influences into your storytelling and and you're bringing characters that come from places and, and are doing things that you're very familiar with as an individual as a diverse individual if those kinds of people are writing those realities into scripts and stories from a top-down approach, you have to start hiring people of color, you have to start telling diverse stories, and you have to have these stories start reflecting society at large. We don't live in an all-white society that consists no. of males that are 65 years old that are white. Um, we live in a society that involves everybody. So if everybody became part of the filmmaking and content creating solution and process, then the films and the projects would come out the other end looking like our society at large. There, And that's the simple answer. So we, that's the main reason for the lack of, of diversity in the films, it sounds like. I mean, uh -huh. so what, I mean, I know that you're saying that, you know, we can write the films differently and the TV shows differently, but also those that come from different backgrounds, having the ability to feel like they can go after these roles and jobs, I mean, how can we make a difference there? How you make a difference there is in the executive offices. You don't see a lot of people that look like me making the executive decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, if, you, if you're not seeing yourself on camera doing things that you would aspire to, it's impossible. It's, it's as close to impossible as you can get to believe that you yourself can be there. So I mm -hmm. think it, from a standpoint of seeing on screen, quote unquote, mentors 
you can say, I want to be like that person. You know what? I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it. If more of those opportunities happened, then you'll see all kinds of people from all kinds of diverse backgrounds start going after those executive roles, going after those acting roles, becoming producers, directors, editors. And, and that's really where it starts. I, I think the problem of lack of diversity in Hollywood stems from Hollywood itself. What I mean by that is people of color and diverse backgrounds have always been portrayed in certain ways all the time. And, and as a result of that, the, the, the population at large begins to think that they're like that in, in real life and, and they're not. And I think that that needs to stop by bringing in those people from the top down. Absolutely. Hollywood has such a huge influence on yeah. how we think. So uh, I want to talk about Seggy TV yes. and the entertainment uh, that you offer on your streaming network and, and the mission behind that network. Thank you. Uh, Segi TV is an over-the-top streaming platform available on all the devices, starting from Roku to Amazon to uh, the Fire Stick to to Roku and and all of the uh, iOS, Android, and LG, Samsung, all all of the major platforms as well as the gaming consoles. Um, what we're doing and how we're doing things differently, Marcy, is we are empowering uh, filmmakers of color, disenfranchised content creators to come over and tell their stories about their unique and diverse backgrounds. Um, again, everybody wants to see themselves on screen. So there's, there's inherent built-in audiences in all of these backgrounds that would come to our channel to watch uh, this programming if it was made available, which it's not happening on the other, uh, it's happening, but to such a small degree on the other platforms that there's just not enough. The, what's being provided out there in the marketplace is, 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 is nowhere near the demand for that content. So Segi TV is offering that on a programming side. On a content creating side, Marcy, we are mm -hmm. offering content creators, producers, directors, a fair shake at, um, monetizing their revenue by giving them fair deals for their content, sharing revenue with them, which is very unique in this business and, and, and a, lot, a lot of times unheard of so that they can come and, and be able to feel the fruits of their labor in terms of earning money on their content. Right, right. Sounds incredible um, to give those opportunities. And I also know that there's another subject that's very important to you and that's climate change. Yes. And you know, you're out there in the media, you're trying to make a difference and how can, how can we really make more of an impact with diversity and climate change and you know, changing the thoughts behind that? How we can do that is we can really point out who the villain is is in the story most stories they have a they have a, a a a bad person and a good person in the story but when it comes to climate change humans are the bad person and the climate is the good person so some a little bit of creative storytelling will be able to point that out in a very poignant yet entertaining way to show us the errors in our ways through storytelling and ways that we can make small incremental changes that will benefit the environment going forward so that we're leaving something for the people that are coming behind us. And it just, as a creative group of people, there's so many ways to do that with technology, with the fantastic writing, bringing people that come from these really harsh and, and, and environments that are, are affected by climate change, if they come into our entertainment and content creating communities, they can tell stories that are unique to those regions and put it into uh, the messaging that we're sending so that people can understand what we're saying and make that change. Absolutely. I wanna thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing with us you know, ways that we can make an impact can change the way that we think. Yes. And I want to congratulate you on all that you're working on. I know you just had a project that you were working on in Saudi Arabia. And, you know, you're just really showing children and others, because I, I feel it starts with our kids, right? Um, and, and making those changes for the future. Yes. And you are truly making an impact there. So uh, thank you so much, Ed, for coming on the show. Marcy, thank you for giving me this platform to speak about it because the more people know about it, the more people will take, take uh, charge and take a hold in making our climate and our planet a better place. So thank you. 
Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Have an amazing Saturday. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Next up, we meet the owners of the Fitting Curve, a specialty bra store. They will teach us how important a bra fitting is and how many bras we need in a lifetime. You won't believe it. Good morning, Marcy. Hi. Good morning. Uh, we are going to talk about something important today, and that is bras and the fitting of bras. So important. I feel like we struggle with this so much, and you guys have a very special story of how you help people through the fitting curve. So why don't you give us a little bit of a background on the fitting curve? Well, we've been open for four and a half years in Rockville Center. Um, We all started in lingerie over 20 years ago, working for other lingerie um, brands and shops. um, And we've remained friends throughout the years. Uh, Stephanie and I are biological sisters. (laughs) Kelly is our adopted sister. Um, So we have all worked together in the past, uh, whether it was uh, management, uh, profit stylists, reps, we've done it all in the lingerie um, industry. And so we felt like we wanted to have our own shop because when you work for others, you always see things that you can do a little bit differently or improve. So here we are. You guys do some very special things at the fitting curve. You help women that have gone through breast cancer. And I'd love to hear just a little more of the mission of the store. So with bra fitting, it's a very, it's a very intimate experience and helping our post mastectomy patients is is kind of priority for us. So we take time to really pick out correct product, quality product, a decent price point as well. Um, It's hard to uh, shop for product or get any kind of resource, whether it's online. Some doctors or nurse practitioners don't know where to send um, their clients. So we really focus on helping our mastectomy clients. Um, I'm specifically trained to to bra fit um, mastectomy uh, uh, clients. So yeah. That's amazing. So let's talk about a bra fitting. You know, there's a lot of us out there that haven't had a bra fitting. So why is that important? Well, your body is going to change about six to 10 times during your lifetime. You will not stay the same exact bra size from when you hit puberty to when you hit menopause, if we'll we'll talk about that as a time span. So you'll go through weight loss, um, weight gain, the COVID-19, 20, pregnancies, um, there's so many things that change your body as a woman and also your taste and style and just things, things that happen over your lifetime. You can never just go, okay, this is my favorite bra. This is it. And it's going to take me through my entire lifetime. Brands always discontinue every day. So that's one. And two, your body needs something different for every shirt that you're wearing. Um, and every case that you might need for life for you'll need a sports bra to work out. You'll need a maternity bra to nurse for those who are going through cancer um, treatments or post-surgical, you'll need um, products to suit that as well. Absolutely. So let's also talk about how long a bra actually lasts. So depending on how many bras you have in your wardrobe, um, and what's your favorite it determines how long a bra lasts. So we say, you know, Five to 10 bras, um, that's including a couple of your everyday basics that you're going to be wearing more often. You need a strapless, you need a sports bra, um, a, you know, relaxing, um, running errands kind of bra. So, you know, you need to have a good amount of bras and that should last you anywhere from a year to two years if you take care of them. Um, a lot of times the quality of the bra that you're purchasing also will determine the lifespan of yes. the bra. Um, so, you know, taking care of it, meaning how you wash it, um, you know, hooking the bag, putting in a laundry bag, gentle cycle, and drip dry. The dryer, it really does uh, take a toll on your bra. So that's really important to know not to put it in the dryer. That's right. And you guys have all of these things there at the fitting bra, at the, excuse me, the fitting yes. curve. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. The fitting bra is what we need. <laughs> 
So you also work with the American Cancer Society, is that correct? Yes, we started that partnership actually at the top of 2020. Um, and it's a partnership we are really excited to, to have with them, which is because we're now kind of um, on a national resource list with them. And uh, with our partnership as well, we wanted to kind of do our part um, besides bra fitting. Um, and so a, a portion of our proceeds from particular styles are donated to the American Cancer Society for making strides against, against breast cancer. Thank you guys so much. It is amazing what you are doing. And this is really so important to every woman. So you guys are really making a difference. And I appreciate you coming on and explaining everything on Wake Up With Marcy. Thank so you. congratulations to all you're doing and how you're helping women. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having Thank us. Thank you. Next up, we meet Kathleen Cutler. She teaches us the key to success. You won't believe her answer. Hi, Kathleen. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. Hi, it's so good to be here, Marcy. Thanks so much for having me. It's awesome to have you. And I love that we are going to talk about success. And we're all going through a lot of changes right now. So it's like, how do, we, how do we adjust to the changes and move forward to success? So can you tell us the key to success and also sales success during this pandemic? So Marcy, I'm so glad we're having this conversation because my clients were so successful during the pandemic. I had on average, my clients were up 53% and I had a client add actually 1.3 million to her bottom line when her physical retail store was closed. She's a third generation jeweler. So that's so huge. Mm -hmm. And the secret that ties all of my client success together is really old fashioned relationship building. I had a client sell a $12,000 choker from sending one email to her best clients. A another client sell a $48,000 Sapphire ring from a five minute phone call. And what I'm here today to talk about is exactly what ties all of those successes together. And it really is something any small business across America can implement this weekend and in the coming months. Mm. So you're talking about connection, sending emails and such, but how do we really connect to people during this pandemic when we can't be face-to-face? I think there's so many ways that we can have a level of virtual intimacy. And I really think it depends on taking what works offline and translating it here into the virtual space. So my clients send a lot of handwritten notes. They send a lot of personalized text messages, emails, they get on video calls. And we try to replicate the offline experience as much as we can. So because I work with fine jewelers, a lot of times they will send a photo or even sometimes send the physical goods. I have a colleague who has a boutique in New Hampshire and she actually knows her best clients inside and out. So when a new style comes in, she actually sends a picture of that new style to her best clients. And she's made so many sales that way. So it really is about how do we understand who our best clients are, what they really love and connect with them, even if we aren't able to be face-to-face -face in person. Right. So tell us, you say more is not better. What do you mean by that? So I think Marcy right now, there's such an emphasis on more Instagram followers and more website traffic. And really at the end of the day, what is the heart of all my clients' success is more sales. So that really is focusing on the mantra that we have with all the clients I work with, which is the best clients are the ones you have. So when we can actually focus on what really brings in one, the relationships, but two, the sales, it's what I like to call the red velvet rope theory. If you had a red velvet rope in front of your store and you only let in people had bought from you once before, maybe their friends, their families, their referral sources, if you were taking exquisite care of your existing clients, you would have a thriving business. It's a very uh, antithesis to a lot of what you hear around just growing, growing, growing. But when we can actually focus on those relationships that really matter, that's where I think business gets really fun. And that's really where those wild successes have come from for my clients. 
That's right. Nurture the the clients that you have, Mm -hmm. which sometimes if we get too caught up and bogged down by, you know, getting more clients, we kind of, we're not nurturing those relationships and the sales are there, right? They're waiting for us. So let's talk about contemporary etiquette. So etiquette is so important, but what is contemporary etiquette? So I like to think of contemporary etiquette as pulling what works in the offline space and translating it really beautifully into the virtual space. So I'll give an example. Marcy, if you were to come into my jewelry store and looking for a specific diamond ring and came in, I pulled it out of the case, showed it to you, told you the price and then turned my back on you, maybe went to answer my phone, ate my lunch and didn't engage with you, that would be considered rude in the offline world. You would walk out of the jewelry store without making a sale. But so often that happens in the virtual space where we have an inquiry come in, we reply right away with the answer, and then we don't follow up. We don't have that level of etiquette and continuing the conversation. So if you were in fact to come into my jewelry store and I showed you this piece, I complimented you on your exquisite taste. And then also strove to understand what brought you in. Are you celebrating a milestone? Did you uh, wake up with Marcy, have an incredible uh, thing that had just happened? It really is. How do we make sure that we are connecting on a deeper level? And that's really when I think of modern etiquette, how do we translate what works really well in the offline space and make sure when we're in this virtual room that we're having that same level of care and making our clients seen, feel seen, heard, and acknowledged. I love it. I love it. So building relationships, it's so important and just showing that that person really matters. So if we want to find out more, find you, where can we find you? So uh, KathleenCutler.com and I'm on Instagram at Kathleen Cutler. And that's really where you can connect with me. I'm always educating. I do a lot of uh, articles and other information about how you can build these relationships. And you can also see pictures of my grandparents who really influence, actually have a photo of them on my desk at all times to really have that old school reminder of those relationships in my business and really how I teach my clients to cultivate that as well. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on Wake Up and helping us. (laughs) All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. I wanted to share a quote with you today. This is from me. Real change does not come easily, but it's worth the hard work. We all say we want to change, but are we really willing to do the work? When you do the work, learn from others, get past the fear and the old cycles, there are more blessings than you could ever imagine. I want to encourage you to please check out wakeupwithmarcy.com. I would love for you to join my email list, keep up with the guests, the upcoming guests, and also watch any of the old shows because there may be a topic in there that pertains to you and could help you change your life. Also, check me out on Instagram and Facebook. I do daily inspirations, lots of fun stuff on there, and also keep you up to date on what's coming up on Wake Up With Marcy. Please be kind to yourself and kind to others. And I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye. Wake Up With Marcy is sponsored by True Serenity Tea, which is a monthly subscription box that delivers award-winning loose leaf teas from around the globe to your doorsteps. Check out trueserenitytea.com to order your subscription box.